Oh boy, do I have a treat today. Today, we are going to be playing pretty much one of my favorite strategy games of all time. Also known as one of the best strategy games ever made. Real-time strategies, anyway. Age of Empires 2. We're going to be playing the HD edition because that's the one that I currently have. But, unlike with most remakes and stuff, I'd recommend sticking to the original if you can dig it up. I mean, the new version has a bunch of expansions that I don't think would work with the original, uh, more that were made by the company that made the HD edition. And they introduced some new civilizations and some new technologies and all kinds of things like that. Uh, but the reason why I'd recommend you didn't do that is because of the difficulty, believe it or not. I'm not going to be playing a random game, uh, but, um... The difficulty is weird, like, in the HD version, it seems like there's a difficulty mode missing. Like, moderate is... It, it's pretty much too easy. The AI is kind of too easy. Either that or it was standard, I don't know which one it was. But then, after you jumped up to that, the game would get, like, really, really difficult. Like, there should be a level of difficulty in between this and this. And in the original, I think there was. Uh, but beyond that, uh, this one has more maps, uh, I believe it has more, uh, difficulty modes. You can have a population of up to 500, the original only had a population of up to 200. Uh, there's same amount of modes, I think Treaty Time was also in the original. Anyway, considering this is a real-time strategy game, I, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work in, in style of Let's Plays. I'm not going to be explaining everything, uh, we're, I said we're not doing that, we're doing campaigns! I'm only going to do the Age of Kings, this was uh, the first expansion, uh, and these are the ones added to the modern. I bought them all, just because, why not? Anyway, uh, these are the five original campaigns. Of the five, I have beaten this one, and I have beaten this one. I, I'm not kidding, I have never beaten this one, this one, or this one. Uh, so, this is the, the campaign. Uh, originally, it said you should start at 5 if you just want a, a typical campaign, because these are basically tutorials. Uh, the goal here is to walk from point A to point B. Uh, the goal here is to gather resources, which is the basic point of the game. Make some troops, uh, get to the next era, and then uh, I'll show you. It, it doesn't shut up, by the way, so I can't get much talking in. is about empire building. Combat and conquest. You start from humble beginnings, a small village in the Dark Ages. You explore to expand your borders, conduct trade to boost your economy, and research technologies to grow your civilization into a mighty empire. But there are difficulties too. Cunning enemies and rivals that oppose you, powerful castles to destroy, tyrants to bring down. And if you're skillful and a little you just might build a wonder of the world and create an empire that will stand the test of time. To learn how empires are built, help our first hero, William Wallace, in his fight against his oppressors. Yay! We're we good. are without a leader. The dead king of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious king of England, has returned from successful campaigns to conquer Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. Well, we must act soon. If we have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. The narrator for the, uh, uh, the first campaign is just so classic. Follow the instructions to reach the Scottish village. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we're to defeat them, I'm just gonna keep every walking. one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. 
Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now, right click near the yep. blue flag. Yep. You're gonna keep going. Good. To be fair, like. To the next flag. Click the soldier, then right click near the flag. Excellent. To move to the next flag, you must walk through the black area. Just Moving keep going. The black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go on to the next flag where you'll this meet some allied like soldiers. This is like so level one for me. Move all your soldiers at once. Click near the units and drag around them. Then right click to move. Now the water graphics are different than the, the next flag. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. Right click the outpost to attack it. Okay, so to be fair, three or four out of the five first levels of all the campaigns are basically walk from point A to point B. The Joan of Arc campaign, uh, the Genghis Khan campaign is a little bit different, but it's still basically walk from point A to point B. And the Saladin campaign as well. Keep following the path to the village. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, quite simple. And as a kid, it was the only campaign that I could beat. The English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack your village. Oh no! Just click your soldiers and right click the red English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers. So, what was this about battle. thousands of longbowmen? They sent a few guys with clubs. Good job! Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Awesome! Let, let's go to the UK right now. Oh, you have to manually quit. Okay, I, I don't remember that being Scotland the original. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we will need many more recruits, much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be steeped in the blood of clansmen. All right, feeding the army. army. Marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. I mean, the game teaches you basically the controls, but it doesn't really uh, teach you how to maintain an economy and an, uh... To support the Scottish the army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. Yeah. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, click a village. Yeah. I'll probably be able to talk more during, like, the Joan of Arc campaign or something like that. Uh, this game has an amazing legacy. Like, it's still played to this day, and it's not just the remake. Uh, the original game even had online functionality with the zone, which is obviously no longer in existence. I'll click on it again, I guess. Right click a forage bush. Yes. A blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying ten food. Like, um, you, you know how there are some channels that are solely dedicated to, like, one game? Like, there were, at least, the a lot of... The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. I'll do what I want, thank you very much. But yeah, like, Minecraft channels have kind of died down, but they were highly in existence at the time. Even to this day, there are still channels 
dedicated to Age of Empires uh, mathematics and strategy, and basically how to make the game work and work well for you. Because the game, even to this day, has an amazing online community. I don't think I've actually played any online matches, uh, but there is it's very active. You now have 50 food. To win, also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. I mean, you know. Gather wood, click a villager, then right click. It. Keep in mind, this game you came out found any gold in 1999. In the unexplored territory. Good! You found some gold! And 20 years later, like, there's Good still job. channels you know, have still wood. out there. Uh, the Age of Empires channel I watch the most is Spirit of the Law. Uh, I wonder how well he's doing. I'll take a look at that inside when my villagers are just doing whatever. Spirit of the Law. Yeah, he has uh, 150,000 subscribers, just about, and he does videos solely on Age of Empires 2. So, uh, that should speak, uh, some testament to the game's You're popularity. Well way to making a city. Excellent! You now have enough gold. Yay. What the- Oh. An army fucking hell, that didn't count. Ah. Cheers again. To support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile <sighs> of resources. To win, Air gather 50 food, 50 wood. I did and that, and it didn't and declare victory for me. Bush. Click a village. Now, the tutorial campaign here, you're not gonna get, like, what's really into the game. I'm not entirely sure how I should do strategy games here. Some of them have campaigns, some of them don't. Uh... And, uh, beating all of the campaigns, considering every single level in a campaign can take hours. I'm not entirely sure how I should go about it. And, uh... The campaigns don't always show what is the best benefit of the game overall. Like, one of the biggest improvements of Age of Empires 2 compared to Age of Empires 1 is that all the maps are seed-based, so you're never really going to get the same map twice. Then, right-click the forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying 10 food. In Age of Empires 1, the maps would be... You had a certain set amount of maps, uh, and they were the same every single time. The only the difference is... Continue working yes, for you, I know. Carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Good! You found some gold! When I was a kid, I had no idea that that thing was corn. I didn't know what it looked like. The graphic was just that bad. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah... If you selected a map in Asian by Empires 1, it would be the same every single time. Your your location, the player location, might have been moved around, but every single tree would be in the same place. Uh, but if you picked, like, rivers or black forest in here... Get 50 food. To win, also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. It would be different in every single time. villager, then right-click a tree. We can go to the feudal age in this. I don't know why you would want to do that. Uh, but yeah, it, every time you picked islands or black forest, it would be completely different. So you can resize the maps, have different amount of players, all that kind of stuff. Although in the first play, in the first uh, game, we haven't found any gold yet. Search in the unexplored territory. <sighs> Like, I know these levels so well. Excellent. You now have enough gold. I know that the enemy isn't losing because there's just, like, one random militia, like, right here on the map. Well on your way to making a city. Do I win this time? For real? For really real reals? Yay! Thank you.
Yeah, like, yeah. maybe they changed that? I don't know. Or deleted the guy? I don't know. Uh, it would make sense. I, I spent a lot of time in the scenario editor. Like, making my own campaigns that had, like, 40 different missions. Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective. If not cruel and ruthless, he's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Long Shanks coming. All right, and training the troops. Throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the city of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up the spear, sword, or bow. We must remake these shepherds into soldiers. I think the reason why people like this narrator so much is because he speaks with such passion about this thing. Like, you believe that he was actually at this battle. Okay, so... We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. Okay. We'll start by creating villagers. Probably click your town center. Then click oh, yeah. the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. Probably, yeah. So you always gotta do this. Start every single match by building houses and collecting and or creating villagers. You can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Good job. The villager has appeared oh, next to your town center. Now, create another village. You need additional housing to support your population. Yep. To build a house, click a villager. Good job. One, two, Try three, building four. another house. Hence. Barracks complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the create militia button. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable population. If you want a metaphor, this is like after you've already graduated high school or even college, and then you went back and tried to attend a kindergarten class. Gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. That's one militia unit. No, this is two. Can you not count? And you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Click the barracks and quickly click the create militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Now that you have a... <laughs> I win! Awesome, I could speed run this shit. <laughs> uh. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But face it, Long Shank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king has yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias could only get us so far. We are going to need more advanced weapons. I can totally believe that four militia is all I need to protect all of Scotland. But okay. Rumors creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland, his great sword driving through earth and man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can hold the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now, our smiths are forging swords, and Fletchers are making arrows and crossbow bolts. Okay. Advance to the feudal age. Repel the English raids. All right. The English use very advanced weapons and armor. Yep. You will need to advance to the feudal age 
and repel the English raid. Uh, You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers hard to kill. To research loom, click the town center, then click the research loom button. You do know that most uh, advanced players say that unless you start as like the Chinese who start with no food at all, researching loom is not something you should do straight away. It's something you should only do like later on. And we're going on. New technologies and buildings become available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the dark age to the feudal age, you need 500 food. And we have to wait. You're on your way to the feudal age. So, yeah, the tutorial here does teach you the basics and the controls, but it doesn't really teach you uh, meta play. Or advanced strategies or. The basic strategies you really do need to uh, repel enemies and win. Like, one one basic thing is to always be making villagers. Like, a uh, town center should never, ever be idle. Ever. Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish your forces. They didn't die, though. In addition to gathering food at forage bushes, villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer. They can also make farms or fish, too. Oh, yeah, space. Oh, yeah, I should mention that. This is an older PC game, even if you pick up the uh, HD edition. So you have to use the arrow keys to uh, move the camera. And considering that uh, I put my microphone right in front of the keyboard, I uh, guess it does make it very awkward as hell. Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. Upgrading to man at arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men at arms. Near the minimap at the lower right corner of the screen is the idle villager button. Click it. And locate villagers oh. are not currently assigned to a task. You're supposed now that you're to be age, You can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click the barracks, then click upgrade to men at arms. Uh, we'll give them hastings too, why not? The English are attacking again! Teach them a lesson with your new men at arms! Yeah, men at arms is not exactly a, a way to deal with knights. You need pikemen for that. Like, one thing I'm surprised the tutorial doesn't teach is how the, uh, troops are related to each other. Uh, archers beat, uh, infantry, infantry beats, uh, I forget which, how it goes. It's, it's kind of typical because it did inspire a, a lot to do this. But certain kinds of troops are very good at infantry, uh, beating infantry, certain kinds are very good at beating cavalry, some kinds are really good at beating archers. So if you just put all of your forces into, like, one thing, you're probably going to lose. Longshanks has invaded, stormed, and sacked the city of Perth. It's worse, he's captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, then the Scottish armies will be too demoralized to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish he'd get his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. Alright, uh, so now we get to what is the real campaign, basically. The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised across the river forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly formed army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can redden their troops. So the basic idea is this is basically a training, quote-unquote, real mission. Hence. 
This scenario begins in a similar way to random map games. After you play this scenario, you should know all you need to play a random map game. Uh, play it, yes. Win it, not the time has particularly. Come to take the, offensive. the English have a fort near the town of Sterling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, but they can see a great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to I built the houses the too close. To find the English. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villager. Ah, why do I keep doing that? Keep making villagers at your town center until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. Yep. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south. <laughs> the hill with the dead tree protects the only access to your town. Could be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. You can specify a location for new units to gather by selecting a gather point. For villagers, click the town center and click the set gather point button. You're close to an English base. You better not knock down this wall until you've got an army of about 12 soldiers. I do a fucking want. I'll take it now. Don't tempt me. I will do it. I will beat this whole thing with just my scout cavalry alone. Uh, we just need a shit ton of food. That's all we need. Somebody is playing Dark Souls. Yay. I believe the fastest way in the game to gather food is uh, with a farm. The farms cost wood, which I don't have. Oh. You found some sheep. Sheep are a good source of food, so send them back to your town center and assign a villager to gather food from them. Use your villagers to build a mill near your forage bushes. Now, click the dock and build a fishing ship. No. Fuck you. Actually, fishing ships in the Dark Ages is a pretty decent strategy considering wood isn't so valuable in the Dark Age. There's only so much houses you can build, and you need every bit of food you can get. Uh, fishing ships don't cost any food. What are you guys doing? Uh, yes. Shore fish are always by the shore, so that usually means there's something else over there. This is a very, um... Usually when it comes to animals, you want as many villagers on them as possible because they continually decay. Also, if a villager is gathering a resource, uh, don't have them get another resource. See this guy's food? If I immediately sent him to gather wood, he would lose that food. However, it doesn't re that doesn't happen if you go from food to food. It still keeps counting the food. Villagers can only carry one type of uh, resource at a time. And then they do that. Kill both of the sheep. This number here is going to continually go, continually go down, whether your villagers are gathering it or not. It's just natural decay. Kia? Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Sure. <laughs> sure. This is sure. Come on. Uh, everyone's favorite part of a real-time strategy game, the waiting. It's weird how you tend to wait more in real-time strategy games than in turn-based. The fish. Take a fishing ship 
and right click on a leaping fish. The fishing ship will collect fish and automatically return them to the dock. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. The English are coming to attack. To protect your villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town center. Click your town center, then click town bell. Build the barracks and five militia to defend your villagers and explore the map. Where's where'd my cavalry go? Where are you? Good! You defeated the English assault. If you have villagers in your town center, ring the town bell again to send them back to work. Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are depleted. It's Each actually farm a needs only one villager working on it. It's actually a better idea to build them around your town center. Anyway, sometimes it's a good strategy to send some dope sil uh, just dummy soldiers to the enemy encampment to uh, harass their villagers. What that'll do is interrupt the economy and make it uh, harder for them to sustain growth. Now that you've reached a feudal age, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least 12. How do you know that? Can I build the other? Okay, I can. I don't even know why they let you build a stable in the uh, feudal age. The only thing you could build is scout calvaries. Ugh, let's build this. I should probably get more villagers. As a kid, and I played this a lot when I was a kid, it was very tempting to not, quote unquote, waste your resources on villagers. Why would I waste my my resources on the villagers when I need them to make the soldiers which I need to win. Uh, good times. Shit, some shit is really going down today. Remember, you can upgrade your militia to men-at-arms at the barracks. You should always upgrade soldiers when you can afford them. No. Sometimes you need to focus on making more soldiers. I guess there's an argument for quality over quantity, but leaving yourself too defenseless isn't going to help. <laughs> uh, I don't want armor. Yes, attack. Tracking. Yeah, that's not important for a stationary map. I don't know. I don't know why they give you stone here either. Give you gold. Kid. Okay, woodcutters, we need you to go faster. Archers are great because uh, they don't need food. They just need wood. And gold. Uh, it's better than having them do nothing, I guess. Farms cost 60, right? Yeah, the Celts don't have any bonuses towards farming. The annoying part about farms is that they expire over time. And when they do, 
I... Uh, you get an annoying sound, and it's always really annoying because it happens at the worst possible times, like when you're in the middle of a battle, uh, which is why you have this. Reseed farms, it will automatically reseed them when it runs out. Don't forget, keep exploring the map. Yeah, I, I explored it all I need to, thank you. Even with this, though, sometimes you still run out of farms at the worst possible time. Seven? That's close enough to twelve for me. Go! Just make it eight, even though the scale cavalry is shit at actually fighting. Have fun. And yes, I do believe that they are actually speaking uh, their languages. Which is a nice touch, even if I literally can't understand any of the civilizations. Archers, that's cavalry. Okay, that's all the infantry bonuses I can get, except for this one, which is not important here. Huh, they can hit through the... They can! I did not know they can hit through the palisade. Go! There we go. Now we gotta destroy a tower. As a kid, these towers were always annoying and scary. Because you had... Ah! Archers! God about you. Yeah, archers beat infantry. Infantry beats cavalry. Uh, cavalry beats archers. Yeah, this early on... Uh, Towers cannot hit their base. That's something I didn't realize as a kid, so just run towards it and take it out. Now we're going to win eventually. Inevitably. They don't ever make anything else. So uh, let's just make the gather point this stupid tower. Also, uh, the Celts... Not one of my favorite civilizations. What the hell are you doing? They are not one of my favorite civilizations in this game. Uh, my favorite is the Byzantines, uh, but of course they don't have any campaigns. Like, to this day, there is no Byzantine campaign. I think there's like one mission in, in a various, uh, like just a one mission campaign, but that is it. Actually, no, I think you're actually fighting the Byzantines there. But yeah, to this day, with all these remade campaigns and stuff, no Byzantine campaigns. I like them because of their amazing wall defenses and they have access to most of the tech tree. That's basically how I decided which civilizations were good or bad as a kid. Uh, whichever had access to the most uh, tech uh, was had to be the best. So, in my opinion, the Goths were the worst, and for some reason I kept getting my ass kicked by the Goths because their bonuses are Good fucking job. amazing. You've eliminated the English soldiers. Now, destroy that tower, and our victory will be complete. The Goths' AI in this game is actually very, very weird because even on easiest, they are one of the hardest civilizations to deal with against the AI. The Battle of Stirling is sure to end in victory for the Scots. Uh, now that you know how to build up, advance through the ages, and find and fight your enemies, you have all the basic skills you need to play a random map game. The most common type of game in Age of Empires. Yep. 
Actually, in my opinion, when I was a kid, the most common type was Deathmatch because, uh, my family didn't really like the, uh, gathering resources or the, you know, playing the game part of the game. We just build giant armies to go after each other. Sterling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word came in that the Sterling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now, we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. Edward Longshank's name's Wallace a traitor and a criminal. But Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. And I will be right back. And we are back. Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling, so we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct the market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artifacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. So the goal here is to get three relics. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent Hello. victories against the English. Kia. Situation's starting Kia. to look up. Did you know that there are three different Trevor. modes for the minimap in the lower right Kia. corner of the screen? Yeah, but you're never going to be using anyone but the default. Only military units or only resources and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the minimap. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in our monastery. Morale. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic. And the English have captured. Forger. Good! You have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right clicking the monk. Right. You can retrieve a relic by clicking a monk and right clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your arm. Perfect. You now have one relic garrison. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. Oh, keep, keep going. Keep going. You'll get there eventually. I would absolutely love an ally the in the game who would give me all of their relics. Forage bushes and animals. Oh, farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager. Then right click a farm. You've reached your ally's town. Go inside and see how his city's doing. Your ally's gate will open automatically for you. Welcome. If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town. <laughs> I'm stealing your sheep. Uh, but yeah, like getting an ally to just give you a fucking relic. Relics slowly tick up your gold, that's basically what they do, and you also win, uh, you can win a random map game by collecting all the relics, if all victories are on. Normally, games are played with just Conquest on, so you don't have to worry about, uh, players just building a wonder and winning like that. It's nice to have allies on the map. Your ally, the yellow player, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. Uh, to trade, you'll need to build a mark. So, yeah, one real, one fun experience is uh, playing deathmatch, and the host didn't realize they accidentally left all, uh, all uh, victory types on and just building a wonder right away. <laughs> Uh, you don't win immediately, it just counts down, like, 200 years, which is, I believe, two hours in-game. Games of Age of Empires can last a very long time. It's it's a strategy game. Games like this, that that's just what they do. They last 
a long, long time. You have a market. The market can create trade cards to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. I don't need stone for this objective, I believe. Da -da 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 -da. Thank you. Gonna have two relics garrison. Bring back one more and you'll be victorious. Uh, where's my scout? That's not a scout. Uh, the period button will uh show you idle villagers. That's the hotkey. The comma will default to uh military units. Also, there's this signal ally thing. This is usually what I did uh, when I found the enemy. I would uh, uh, shoot the flare over the enemies. It's supposed to signal help uh, and try and make my computer ally do all the work. But they never did. They, the they, I don't think the, uh, the computer and ally can... Any spare food or gold to us. Thanks for the resources. If you have any spare soldiers, come to our town and let's drive the English out. The tribute your ally... Click the diplomacy button in the upper right corner of your screen. Give your allies some food and gold, but don't give them everything you own. I don't need to. I need this. I need this. This. There's only one villager. Okay. Villagers Come and on. soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they're created by using gather points. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks. Click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. It's interesting, they let you go to the Imperial Age in this campaign. I remember this game being very stingy with which era they let you go into. Maybe they changed that in the remake, I don't know. Well, it's an HD edition, not a remake. Even though these graphics look, with the exception of the water, these graphics look exactly the same as they did in the original. Which is fine, because the graphics are really good. Something about isometric really just speaks to me. Like, there are always the games that hold up the best aesthetically, I think. Like, Roller Coaster Tycoon, for instance. The pixel art in that you game can use the technology is tree to amazing. See what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. <sighs> uh, spoilers: the Celts don't have much. I mean, some people really like them. I don't think they're one of the top played civilizations. Uh, but let's just say that the English are technologically superior to the Celts. <laughs> in this game. That's useless to me. Okay, heresy is the stupidest technology in the entire game. When monks convert something, you get control of their units. However, if you research heresy, they die instead. Why would you want this? Why would anybody want this? And it costs a thousand gold, too. It's it's awful. It's a it's the worst thing you could do for yourself in terms of monks. Like I'm pretty sure most players go specifically the other way to not get this. Let's see. What do I want? Do I want a soldier to fight for me, or do I not want that? Also, I guess I should mention the achievements of, uh, this game, that they're just, uh, they're just awesome. <laughs> uh, 
some of them were so extreme that they legitimately had to be removed. Uh, I'm going to uh, look it up while uh, things are going on. Uh, we can go some more. Edge of Empires 2 HD Edition. Uh, we have geez. enough soldiers now geez. to think about attacking the English and recovering their relic. Achievements. I mean, like, I, I said that I never beat these campaigns when I was a kid, but that's not entirely true. I did beat them using cheats. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I don't think uh, the Celts have the can get the technology that allows them to uh, convert enemy buildings. And if you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here, take this food and wood. And if a civilization couldn't get that technology, it was a, it was a downright no go for me. There was no way I would play a civilization like that, uh, which is weird because I don't often use monks when I uh, go in. Okay, yeah, let, let's see some of the, those achievements as soon as it loads. This, this is enough. Are you sure? This is exactly like what I started with. Oh, I have a stable. What the hell? Knights are pretty useful. Okay, da, da, da. let's go take a look at some of the, uh... You have created 1,000 castles! <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, castle, 650 stone. Uh, and there are, there's usually less than 10,000 stone on any given map. Uh, you need to play... You need to pretty much play every civilization a thousand times. And you need to beat every civilization a thousand times as well. There used to be achievements for 10,000 times, uh, but those were removed. <laughs> because I guess they decided, maybe that's a little bit too much. Usually, what I would... Uh, your units move as slow as your slowest unit, and the battering rams are slow. Uh, you usually what I do as a kid, because taking a wall, destroying a wall took forever to break down. I would go with the enemy to basically stand in their gate and just run through. And honestly, that's something that still kind of works to this day. At least against the computer. I don't think a, an actual player is that stupid. Now on a map where you can use stone, they don't give you any stone. That's... that's interesting. They don't have any stone either. I mean, I can build a castle. Go! Go! Do it! You probably want to go after the gates. Also, remember to focus fire. <sighs> Go after the cavalry first. They might not hit the hardest, but they're certainly the most expensive. And see, these guys are in. They could just go out of their way and not you. Break the gate. Monks, why aren't you trying to con uh, Whatever. Monks can only convert someone every once in a while. They need to recharge. But they don't need to do that to heal. Yeah, re research is needed before buildings can be converted, and I'm pretty sure it's a castle age thing. No, oh, that's useful. Uh, let's put some more knights in there. Just all the knights. Pretty sure there's towers or some shit in here somewhere. 
Oh, hey, you can die. That's a mill in the market. Give them something to do, I guess. Yep, you want to back away. Town centers can hit close to them. You know what? I got something better for you to do. Battering rims are naturally defensive against arrows. That relic. Oh my god, you like I said, worst possible time every time. I, I swear. I swear it. Okay, you guys are just standing about. I also remember way back when that there was a button or a command that would allow uh, a unit to freely explore. It doesn't... Oh, there it is. I, I don't know if they got rid of it or if I was just imagining things, but I do remember a button for a thing to freely explore. And I don't think I'm confusing this with another game, even though I did play a lot of strategy games. Maybe it was an Empire Earth, which is basically, uh, it's almost a clone of this game, just with, uh, with a few extra features, I guess. I really like Empire Earth, but, uh, I, I bought the good old games version of Empire Earth, uh, and I tried to start it up, and it crashed my computer, so, uh, I don't think it's compatible. Hundred castles. Wow, not a lot of people have completed the campaigns. Only 2.8% of people have completed the Genghis Khan uh, and the Barbarossa campaigns. And 2.9 have done the Saladin campaigns. That is, that is like about one in 50 people. I mean, I get most people don't play this game for the campaigns, but still. I guess I'm always looking for rare. Uh, You've captured all three relics. Uh, rare achievements. This game has quite a few. Apparently, only 2.8% of people have defeated the Spanish 20 times. I mean, I get why the expansions don't have a lot of people who have beaten them, because it also uh, filters in the people who uh, don't own the expansions, and I really wish Steam Achievements wouldn't do that. Now locked away safely in Scottish churches. Men murmur that we are blessed with the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of our own with which to meet long shanks. We march south to Falkirk, where we will rendezvous with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. Seriously, if there's something that annoys me about Steam achievements, it's that achievements that are exclusive to expansions are just lumped in with the rest of them. And they don't even differentiate it on the Steam menu. Like, here are the Vietnamese. That's, that's an expansion achievement. But just thrown right in there with complete all of the base campaigns. Sometimes it's obvious to tell, sometimes it's not. Like, uh, Baldur's Gate, for instance, has, a, has an achievement uh, that looks like it can be 
done in the base game, like, uh, uh, have your whole party have infravision, which is basically a see in the dark power all at once, which you could do in the base game. Uh, it only counts in one of the expansions or one of the DLCs. And there's absolutely no differenti differentiating there. And it's also really annoying if you're trying to get, like, 100% in as many games as possible. Because uh, if you get 100% in a particular game, it doesn't show it. It shows you got, like, 60-something percent because of all the DLC achievements. It's just stupid. The only way we can hold the foggy lowlands around Falkirk is to build a castle and as many walls as we can construct in a short time. These fortifications will serve to protect our camp as we construct siege weapons with which to assault the English castle. Once the castle is constructed, Wallace himself has sworn to join our forces, and together we will attack Longshanks and his English troops. Uh, so Wikipedia says that the Scottish lost the Battle of Falkirk. So I'm not too confident the about uh, my chances on this yeah, mission. Already, but you should complete them as soon as you have enough stone. Uh, yeah, like it, it's weird as hell. Uh, but for some reason, uh, they uh, uh make you the final uh, mission of the Scottish campaign. Is one where the Scots lost? So, uh. Uh. Okay. If you have surplus resources of one type, you can sell them for gold at your market. You can then use the gold to buy what you need. Also, there are some things that they didn't fix in this uh, campaign, or in this game, that I really wish they did. And one of them is gates. I mean, now you can make palisade gates, uh, but look at this. I can't manually rotate the gates. You have to use it on a wall to do it, and it can be kind of confusing to do so. You can also build towers to defend your city. Units can garrison within a tower for defense and protection, and archers can even fire out of a tower. So, uh, yeah. So, a basic gate is like this. But if you wanted to get, uh, to face the other direction, you can't do that manually. There's no possible way. You have to line it up with a wall. And when you remove the wall, it looks like this. Or you and you still can't do it. So the only way to do it is to waste stone and place down uh, basic, uh, basic uh, walls. Uh, to build a castle, you must first advance to the next age, the castle age. Yep. What about it? Uh, but... Yeah. The advance buttons let you set combat states for your soldiers. A defensive soldier will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, then note the combat stance buttons on the lower left corner of the screen. Using the advance buttons, you can also order a soldier to patrol an area between two points and guard or follow another unit. What? Those are very, very selectively used. You have enough resources to go to the castle age. You should do that soon. I have redundant houses? Why do you give me redundant houses? Uh... Can I get you? 
Honestly, if I was taking this level seriously, I think one of the first things the to do would be to allow access get rid of that to shit. a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect the weak unit, such as a monk. Not really, because then you'd be uh, making a to move. Okay, you want to protect a weak unit, but such as a a monk, quote unquote. All right, let's let's do box formation. So, I want to move these guys all the way across the map. Uh, but to do that, I would have to do this and uh, break the box formation. Or... Yeah, or do them all together. And it's kind of a crapshoot of where uh, in the box uh, the thing will end up. Actually, it'll always end up at the wall of the box. I don't think many people actually use these formation things. The game gives you so many features. Come on, I want to have the stone. Gold is far more valuable than stone, but stone is rare, and you can really cripple someone's chances of winning if you get all of the stone on the map. Congratulations. You're going to find lots of things to do in the castle age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. No, you you start with a castle. <laughs> Seriously, there's no reason not to if you have the resources for it. Mm. Do it. Did you give me a market? Yes, you did. You may need to assign extra villagers to gather stone so you'll have enough to build the castle and all the fortifications you'll need. Way ahead of you, man. Actually, uh, we should be focusing more on gold at this point. Uh, we don't need another castle. Great! You've completed the castle. Sir William should be here soon, and then it will be time to attack the English. Uh, whatever you say, man. Okay. All of these trees here. They shouldn't be here. This is... Wallace has come. Uh, yes. Yes, he has. Uh, can he... Okay. Usually when you get a hero, they're not allowed to die, but, uh... I could press delete on William Wallace, and he would be... And I would still be able to win. Oh, it's not a ward raider. One of your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create ten more ward raider. Uh, ward raiders are decent, I guess. They have a lot of attack. Decent HP, I guess. Not so good in the armor department, though. Oh, hey, a battering ram. Where's the rest of my troops? Let's just end this, I guess. Not the villagers. William Wallace and his old raiders on your side. The English may be in trouble! Once you have a large army with plenty of siege weapons, go. This 
destroy the English castle. Uh, can we build the siege workshop now? Trebuchets are massive siege weapons with a great range, available only in the Imperial Age. Remember that trebuchets must be packed to move and unpacked to fight. Trebuchets are fucking awesome. <laughs> they're very cheap, too. I mean, they cost a lot, but, like, using them, I, I consider kind of cheap. Uh, they're best used for getting rid of castles, considering they're the only thing that can hit castles and still be out of castle range. You can research a technology that will allow your castles and towers to hit at their base, which is basically the first thing you want to research when you get a university up. With your new siege workshop, you can make battering rams. Rams are slow, but they're resistant to arrow fire and excellent at knocking down walls. You may need some rams to attack the English castle. Yeah, so the best thing you got is probably using a uh, trebuchet. It's the perfect castle killer, to be honest. Dunkat. Hey, thanks! Thanks for holding the door open for me! <laughs> Yay! We're all inside! Except this guy. This guy's just a loser. Mm. Okay, get away from this the shitty town center. We we need to focus on uh, this. Uh, the biggest problem with or the, the, the biggest strength of the uh, longbowmen is that they can hit from really far away. Like I don't know why they're getting so up and close. Uh, besides the trebuchet, I think they have the longest range in the game, and they can be really devastating. Ah, hey. Thanks. Thank you for. Uh, okay. They'll keep sending these things one at a time at me, I guess. Uh. They don't have infinite resources. I mean, at higher difficulties, the computer will literally cheat. Like, literally and randomly get resources. Hero characters, when they're hurt, they will slowly heal themselves. They're very valuable. Uh, so valuable that uh, usually you will lose a, le uh, a mission if they die. Hello. I don't know where you're going, but you're not going to get there. Where did my battering ram go? Did it, did it die? Oh, there it is. These guys, I, I guess, will take care of it eventually. I don't know what to do with the transport ships. They're... I guess they could have gotten me around this wall... thing. <sighs> Even at this point in the game, villagers can be quite valuable. And you always gotta take a moment to just get rid of them if possible. And if you can destroy their town center and all their villagers, they, they, they essentially lose. To me, that was always victory conditions. Yeah, they could still have some resources stockpiled. Uh, but chances are they weren't going to put up much of a fight. Hmm. 
Is the gate open yet? Let's just go for the castle, I guess. There's the castle. Does it have murder holes? Nope! <laughs> they haven't researched murder, ho murder holes. So you just walk up to it and it can't hit you. Uh, so I guess that's checkmate. Still on the screen. The English castle at Falkirk is no more. The English pretensions in Scotland are surely at an end. The forces of Wallace are triumphant. Do you want me to tell him? Are you gonna tell him or should I? Uh, my throat is sore though, so I think uh, we'll do the other campaigns a new day. It looked certain that we would be defeated at Falkirk. Yet, somehow, though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious! English castle was torn down, and a Scottish one will be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he's but one man, he inspires great deeds in others, and many of the Scottish princes and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five and a half foot beast, forged, of course, in Scotland. He has sworn not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. The struggle will continue, but we have learned the ways of war. Now, it is the English who will know fear. Okay, well, we're done with the learning campaign. I'm not going to do use in order. Like, I, I'm i probably going to go after Barbarossa. I already got the achievement for Joan of Arc, and I'm kind of tempted to get the others first. But right now, I think I need a break. Uh, even the learning campaign took me over an hour to do. So, until next time. And we are back. Oh, yeah, this is a game with a Discord overlay. That That's not going to be a problem at all, I'm, I'm sure. Anyway, back to the Age of Kings. Uh, I have beaten Joan of Arc. Uh, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to say which one of these is, like, more difficult. Uh, it, it, I believe it generally goes up in, uh, in difficulty. Two is probably easier than three. And three is probably easier than four, but I want to go for Barbarossa. Because Barbarossa's first level is the only one that isn't a point A to point B mission. So, you have come to hear the tale of Frederick Barbarossa. Better order us another round. <laughs> Maybe three. You see, it is a great tale. But then again, everything about the man was great. Barbarossa was a man of great appetites, great ambitions, and a great red beard. But the question, the question you want to know is, was that enough? Is the will of one man enough to forge an empire? For there was no Holy Roman Empire at that time, only a gaggle of quarreling city-states. These dubiously loyal princedoms were more interested in a loose confederation than a unified empire. But Barbarossa, he believed that he was the emperor by will of God, 
that he intended to bring the Holy Roman Empire back to its former glory. If that meant crushing all of the German princes, well, so be it. Alright, this mission can be quite tricky, you know, if you don't cheat. Uh, it's the first mission that's actually kind of like a random map mission, and I need to be less stupid. We start in the Castle Age, uh, let's see what we got here. Capture four of the six relics, uh, I've got a bunch of hints. Because the Empire faces so many enemies, it'd be wise to dispose of one or two before they can become a real threat. Take care to have a monk ready to transport to nearby relics. You can tell if an enemy has a monastery. Yeah, blah blah blah. Okay. Uh. D d do stuff. We gotta get moving. Like. Now. Hey, what? Where'd my other. Okay. Just... Yeah. We need to create a few more villagers. With what we can get. All right, the bridges are the uh, quote-unquote weak point here. If we could build walls around them, we'll be a lot safer. Uh, we got a good amount of stone, which can be very helpful for that. I, I, I don't know what that sound effect is, is about, but I really do like it. It's, it's classic. Ah, stupid. Ah, no, what are you doing? I am going far too slow, we're going to die. You join them. Stoop. The enemies will attack us sooner or later. I believe I'm playing on standard difficulty, so... We need to get moving. There are four different entrances to our little, uh, town here that we need to take care of. Yeah. Yeah. This time, we play the Tuatans, which is, uh, an alright civilization, I guess. Probably not one of my absolute favorites, but uh, I like them. Their Teutonic Knights uh, are really good, and I have no idea how to pronounce them, so. More villagers, please! What are you- why are you not- what are you doing? Oh. Yeah, right now they, they, they just doing weird scouting and shit, but they will attack us with enough time. Uh, you actually did your job. Good. <sighs> it's absolutely not going to be an enough, but... It's a start. Got a barracks to upgrade these guys. I mean, we're not absolutely defenseless, obviously, but, uh... Uh... We're not defensive enough. I suppose it's worth it to keep scouting out. We need to capture four out of the six. So we don't have to kill everybody. But I believe we have six enemies and each one of them has a relic. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, this would be a good first place to tackle. Not enough story of my life. Ah! No!
Go here. <clears throat> yeah, you, I want you to build this. Uh, uh, catapult type things can be stupid. That's exactly what I mean. You need to micromanage them to actually be useful. Ah, yes, redemption. That's the technology I was talking about. Need more wood. Care of that. We got any wood? Uh, yeah, we, we should probably all. Fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, good, good luck with that. Okay! Hey, we just got a random... Okay. Let's... let's see... what happens. Yay! Take... Take that, Swabia! Ah, no! They're getting through! Oh, just that one dude got through. Okay. Still, probably want to gate. Hey, what? Uh, okay. Considering they can get through... That's where I should put my defenses at the moment. You need to build a mine. At the very least, I've created a bottleneck. I hope. I gotta be more. I gotta pay more attention to my. Villagers. Sheep? Oh, sheep. Okay. Yes, let's let's complete this wall, shall we? Uh, still need more wood. Yay. There we go. Yeah, get the fuck off my property. Two hundred wood, god damn it. for a blacksmith that don't have enough shut up sheep don't have enough anything for anything my god this almost yeah, it's, it's getting there I guess come on somebody come on thank you Get out of the fucking door! Uh, I'm 
just going to uh, go to do not disturb. There we go. Hopefully that keeps things a little bit quiet. Oh, yeah, you. Now we need quite a bit for that. Hey, uh. Hey, uh. Hmm. Let's put a university over here. I don't think they're going to really utilize the waterways or enemies. Doesn't mean we can't. That's a good source of food. I don't know why, I just love that chime. I spent so much time just clicking on random buildings to hear their sounds <laughs> growing up. It's probably stupid, but is what I did. And yes, of course, I would uh, pick... When you start a random map game or any free play game, every civilization would have its own little, um... Its own little, uh... uh jingle. And sometimes I would pick a civilization based on how good their uh, jingle is. Uh, uh... And sometimes I would avoid really good civilizations because their jingle was fucking awful or disturbing or whatever. Like, the Huns. The Huns is a pretty good civilization, I think most people can agree on that. Uh, but, uh, their, uh, jingle, uh, kind of terrified me as a kid. Uh, same with the Goths, even though I hated Goths because of their stupid tech tree. My god! Not enough wood. No, that is not a good sign. Diplomacy. Oh, it doesn't tell me which age they're in. Okay. Also, yeah, the HD edition of Age of Empires has Discord integration. A lot of games do nowadays, and I absolutely fucking hate Discord integration. I I'm not kidding. Because whenever I'm recording, people decide to start talking. And usually it's about something private that I don't want people- I don't want to have spread to other people. So, if there's a way to turn off Discord integration, I would really like to hear it. Can we improve the towers? Thank you! Hey, sir? Yeah, you. Uh... Oh shit, we're almost out of food. Well, there's the boars, uh, but they attack back and usually you, use a, uh, you lose one villager getting them unless you're really good at the... Uh... These, okay, I thought somebody else was using my dock. No, not Schwabia! No! Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you should build me a house. You guys have something more important to build. But yeah, like... In pretty much any game ever that has Discord integration, I can never find the option to turn it off. I mean, let's go to options right now. Allow audio tons, key garrison, uh, unique player colors, 
Clamp mouse to window. That's not something I want. Uh, hockey. Yeah, no, no Discord integration to turn off. And closing down Discord on my PC doesn't work either. Discord is pretty much on in the background. Yeah, so that's my strategy that I recommend for this particular level. Build walls. You cannot have all the... Like, these random soldiers probably aren't going to kill you. They're definitely not going to take down a castle. Uh, even if you don't have murder holes. Uh, but they will interrupt your economy. A lot. Okay, uh, let's use defensive stance so they... Basically, you want defensive stance so uh, your soldiers do not chase these idiots all over the map. Let's see. We could probably go after Swabia soon. Might be uh, wise to start... Uh... Let's see. There we go. I want a couple of battering rams first. Also, the music in the HD edition is worse. You see right now how there's a bunch of uh, clicks in, in, like, actual game clicks in the audio track? Yeah, that wasn't in the original, and nowadays it kind of confuses me. Like, not actively, like, I know exactly what's going on, but, um... With muscle memory and shit, it can be a problem. Yeah. Uh, the biggest problem with siege weapons, of course, <clears throat> of course, is that they cost a lot of wood and gold, and I don't have a very good gold economy right now. Okay. These guys are really good at taking care of Oh. <laughs> Taking care of knights and shit. Oh my god. If I could build another castle, that problem would be solved. Where's my monk? I had one, didn't I? Where'd it go? And that way it'll absorb the cost. But yeah, you shouldn't use in-game sound effects in your music track. I don't, I don't really know why I have to explain that, but you, you don't do that, especially in a strategy game where audio cues are incredibly important. Eight hundred gold, okay. Uh, that's not important. That might help. I still want my stuff. Oh, damn. Hey, uh. You, we need more docks. Go out of the way, steam overlay. <laughs> Let's see, monks, healing range, murder holes. Oh, we have murder holes for free, okay. Let's see. I'm just checking uh, the two of bonuses. Infantry civilization, no infantry bonuses. What the fuck? Like, no, no, seriously, what the fuck? 
Unlike other strategy games, most of the civilizations in uh, Age of Empires play largely the same. They're just differentiated with their uh, different bonuses. You can't go through the... No, you can't. They could do that in the original. Yeah, these archers aren't, aren't going to be a, much of a problem. <sighs> okay, Imperial Age. Should probably start trying to convert these idiots. Come on, go, go. And yeah, uh, uh, I'll need to uh, upgrade uh, my soldiers again to get the man at arms to increase. Actually, I don't even know if that'll work. That's not important, but a uh, fortified wall would probably help, considering they keep talk. Uh, ah, what are you doing? It's, it's like Tiny Tim trying to uh, fight when the army is standing back. Ah, yes, the sound effect of houses going up. I would absolutely love it. I would absolutely love to know if my houses actually were going up. You know, imagine listening to this specific track if you were building houses. And it was very important for them to be up in the, that immediate instant. Also, siege weapons cannot be healed, they must be repaired, which costs resources. Speaking of that... Look, we need to take out one of these guys sooner or later, it's getting annoying. And Swabia is probably uh, the one I'm going to go for. And of course, crop rotation. Uh, in the Imperial Age, you gather resources like crazy. Where are the... F They're dead, aren't they? Oh, no, not the Zoonic Knights. That's that bad. We are without a military. Yeah, run. Fuck, go, go away. We don't want any. Just houses. All oh, the fucking houses. The Teutonic Knights are, are really good troops. Especially against the buildings. They're great for sieges. I cannot afford that. Oh... Okay, I think we need to take out Swabia before they become a problem. We don't really have much. What are you. Villagers, what? Uh, we need 
to do this. Oh, they've upgraded already. That's brilliant. Teutonic Knights move really slow, though. Come on. No, it. You stand there. Yeah, these spearmen are generally what's known as trash units. They're very good at taking out cavalry, but that is literally it. Uh, we need stone. Where am I? Go. Just, just fucking go. You can build another barracks. Oh my god, you guys move so slow. I guess I guess you could say that I'm not the biggest fans of the Tuitans. Come on, you can win. Perfect. Monastery ain't too important right now. We just need to attack their chances of rebuilding. A town center down like this, that is devastating. Especially if it's their only one. Luckily, the Teutonic Knights are fucking monsters when they finally catch up to you. What? They didn't die? Where's Monk? That's not Monk. Where? where, where? Oh. My blacksmith. Skirmishers are also trash. Is there anything I can have to make? Yes! Where's the monk? Monk? Where did my monk go? Oh, there it is. Get rid of the important buildings, not the fucking houses. Things like this. Oh no, you fucking don't. Oh, just a siege workshop. Usually, when a town center is down, what you want to build is a town center. Uh, we need to take care of these guys, though. Sasa. 
all of them. They're really trying to get through that wall. Like, really, really hard. Uh, sappers. Why would I want that? Uh, got any other infantry things? Yeah. Actually, I can make a trebuchet and get rid of these fucking towers. They do not need to be there. Oh my god, you actually fucking built the siege workshop. Why would you do that? Did the monk come back with the... Okay, good. I guess that didn't count towards their defeat or some shit. Oh, hello! Alright. Time to go after the second enemy. The... The blue ones have been annoying me the most, but uh, they were actually behind a wall. Yeah. Trebuchets are great. They're very good at hit and run tactics. These guys, we want to get our battering rams back. I think we're gonna need them. Even though trebuchets almost make them redundant. The gimmick, though, is that you have to pack them up to move them. I probably didn't... Oh, okay. I guess a little bit of a move is... Costs a lot of food. Yeah, he could just keep doing his thing. Hey, uh. Uh, are we... No castle bonuses. Okay. Ah, stop. Yeah. We're almost out of gold. Let us march! Yeah, the Sonic Knights are just basically very slow moving Knights of Death. I think their weakness would actually be cavalry, not archers. Actually, that's always their weakness of infantry. Oh, these guys got a wall. Okay. Well, yeah. you guys need to follow. Oh, the enemy two on ignites. No, 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 no. Yeah, 
Oh, good. We got uh, enough. Uh, let's just say enough to do exactly what I want to do. It's time to go fuck you. Go have some fun. You as well. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Absolutely. Uh, we abs- uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Village, your attack. There we go. Go. Break their walls. Okay, no initial attack. Good. Now it's going to be damn near impossible for them to do anything. Once you've defeated one enemy, generally speaking, you're good enough with, uh, you're strong enough to defeat the rest of them. We need to burn these people. Focus! Uh, please! Oh, no! We're getting hit from all sides. Jesus. Uh. Excellent! And we'll... Build a town center and prop. Yeah, that's the issue, isn't it? Okay. Ha. Huh. Like I said, every single level in a, in a strategy game takes a very long time. Alright, did we repel all of the attacks? Oh, we're not mining gold right now. That's not good at all. Attack by. Yeah. That's the annoying thing about the attack alarm. Sometimes you just get hit by one random lone unit.
What the hell is that? The Swabians shall fall. Is there any other infantry things? Thank you, that's important. You get to kill this. Whatever the hell it is, I don't want it around. Oh! Yes, I really don't want it around, my god. Just a blacksmith. Uh... Well, let's follow the roads and see where they take us. Taking down the Saxons is probably the next step here. Oh, yeah, it's another gate. And, uh, why aren't they dead? That. Uh, like, I know the goal is not to kill them, but still, it's concerning me that they're still alive. And they probably don't have anything that can be used to uh, 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 defeat me, but still. Hello. This Bavaria. Yes, chase them down. That'd be helpful. This bar. Okay, where did my troops run off to this time? I know I had plenty of them. Okay. Uh, don't really need much more wood at the moment, but, uh... I just gotta wait for the rams to be done. Can't improve them anymore. I don't want to have to worry about the Swabians anymore. Yeah, let's... 
Let's go. Uh, they're gonna have a little bit of a tougher time uh, repelling this. Oh, hi. God damn it. <coughs> Hello. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit more than one soldier to, to make this work. Sonic Knights just cost so much food. Yeah, right now Burgundy is... Burgundy is getting a little uppity. And Saxony has way too many fucking siege weapons! Go! Go! Get it! Ugh, fucking hell. Can't click on the right fucking thing. Normally, it's actually wiser to not hit the gate if you only have one thing, because uh, uh, the walls are weaker than gates. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go! Kill it! Kill the, the kill the thing! Ah, oh, good. The Sonic Knights are too fast for the uh, uh, organ or their mangonel to hit. Yeah, we're coming inside. Thank you very much. I don't know if in the campaign the, the thing cheats, but uh, every single uh, siege weapon destroyed costs a lot. That alone makes it worth it to just pile drive them. And it looks like they don't really focus on repairing walls. Generally speaking, the computer doesn't really seem to understand them. Even in the original. I have fire ships. Do something! <laughs> For something that doesn't move very fast, they are certainly created very fast. I would say that the campaigns help you um, experience a variety of the uh, in-game units. The problem is, five civilization, uh, five civilizations out of 
dozens. And honestly, um, it, it, the base campaigns don't really make you play some of the, uh, more interesting civilizations. The Tuatins, the Franks, not the Franks, you don't, actually you do play the Franks. The Tuatins, the Franks, uh, the Celts, and the Saracens. Uh, honestly, like, Jean of Arc, thank god it's the easiest of the other four campaigns. Uh, because the Franks are generally known as the worst civilization in the entire game. You know how the Tuzans are a infantry civilization and they get bonuses, or they supposedly get bonuses to infantry? Well, the Franks are a knight's civilization. They pretty much only get bonuses to the knight line. Yeah. Hello. When I find that fucking siege workshop... There! Kill it! Kill it now! Okay, town center, it's doing too much damage. While you're attacking, you sh should always focus on uh, the next force. I misclicked. God damn it. This also needs to die. You three can have a little bit of fun. That archery range is next, I hope they know. The big question is, where is their monastery? No, that's why it's purple there. It's their... No, they don't build infantry for some reason. They do have a castle somewhere, though, which concerns me greatly. I'm sure the castle could do a great, uh, great damage to my Teutonic Knights, so... They're not elite, okay. I don't know if the enemies can advance to the Imperial Age. I'm glad, uh, so, uh, I don't know if I should be worried about that. Oh, you're out of food. Well... This is just something I do. They, they are the next to go. Absolutely. Do they not have? What? Do they not have a relic? There's no flag in their thing. Out. 
Come on. Sestoma. Yeah, move faster. Yeah, I, I guess focus on that in the moment. Except you. Yeah, they do create quickly. God damn it. Ah! No! No! Okay, good. The castle is dead. Yay, we'll build another... Is there a stone pile around here somewhere? Is there a stone pile anywhere? Wow! <laughs> the, Aust <laughs> the Austrians don't like me very much. There's gotta be a, a relic here. I actually need some scout cavalry to figure out where the hell everything is. <laughs> More villagers, perfect. If I can eliminate my enemies, I will know for sure that I that there's no problem. Where are they coming from? Saxony is still technically alive somehow. I bet experts can like win this level in like 30 minutes. There's no relic. What the hell? <laughs> oh, that was a close one. Mills and lumber camps aren't very useful in terms of staying alive. Neither are blacksmiths or outposts. They don't keep you alive at all. Alright.
Oh, hey, now I can build the town center here. Ah, uh, well, we keep getting attacked from here, so I guess we should just march on. Squeeze through that, really? Oh god. <coughs> uh, we're at the hour mark, uh, so I will uh, pause it, and I will be right back. And I have returned. So retro, using the pause break button to actually pause a game. Normally, nowadays, you need to press P to do it. Actually, I think some keyboards don't even have a pause break button anymore. I see. There could be anything here. Hello. Please be it. Where are they hiding? Yay! Swabi is defeated! Uh, finally! Uh. The thing about Age of Empires is you tend to lose a game long before you're actually defeated. Actually, that's most real-time strategy games. Normally when I was a kid, what I would do is like put five villagers on a transport boat and put them in the back corner of the world, uh, just, just in case. And uh, when I was defeated, I would just park up somewhere else and rebuild. Uh, that's that's probably not a good strategy. Uh, we've hit the cap of population of the map. We can't get any more than 75. I know that that's because that's pretty much all standard games. The 75 is, seems to be really low for battles that are supposed to represent, like, wars with thousands of units. I couldn't imagine an, an Age of Empires game with just thousands of units. Like, the scale of actual battles. Would be insane. So I guess there's nothing to do but to lose them. <laughs> Villagers. Actually, at this point, I don't think they're too valuable, although losing some extra gold always hurts. Yeah, I am. Let's see, do they even have murder holes? The Franks don't get it for free at the early. Oh my god. Kill him! It's always good to take out monks for a variety of reasons. Number one, uh, they can convert your units, which is always bad. Uh, but beyond that, uh, they're actually quite expensive. That was a gold mine. Uh, so. 
Oh, yay. March! Probably ignore them. Uh, just do something, I guess. Uh, look at all these resources I got. Wait, can I finally... Yay, I can finally upgrade my fucking towers! There's only one other civilization that has uh, walls, but uh, considering every civilization supposedly has a relic, uh, it's not necessary. It's always weird finding sheep this late in the game. They're seriously trying to get to... It's interesting how they're not attacking my fishing ships. I guess the fishing ships are kind of the reason, are a cause of my population problems. Uh, more stone's always good, I guess. Okay, Burgundy keeps attacking me, so uh, it's time to uh, pay them back a little bit. Which is weird, because I don't think they're, I think they're one of actually the weaker civilizations. One of those that the level recommends you get rid of early. In combat, generally, you want to micromanage. Make sure your characters focus fire. Oh, they have a castle. That's what I didn't want. Where the fuck is it? When you hear that sound, it means that one of your units has been converted. Okay, so I'm going to need a trebuchet and a bunch of friends. What is smoldering? Oh, that's... That is. Okay. I think if something is garrisoned in a castle, it can still fire at its base, even if, uh, even if you don't have murder holes. That seems useful right now. Yes. Go. <laughs> oh, the green also has walls. 
Blue just has a castle. Or cyan, I guess. I'm blue. You know what? For funsies, let's let's just go. See what happens. Guard you. You guys uh, take care of that. They must have like no upgrades whatsoever. You get rid of the castle. You specifically guard that. So. Yeah. Have fun. No! No, 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 no. We must destroy the castle. The castle shall fall. Now you can probably see why only 1 in 50 have actually completed this campaign. 1 in 50 owners of the game. Considering this is the first level and usually there are 5 to 7 levels in every campaign. Uh, Monk, which is the one that makes me go faster? That's the one, thank you. You need to focus. All right, where am I? Let's see if I could just snag the relic. I have more of these guys. As long as the castle's out of the way, these guys can just take care of the business. The castle's the only thing I really have to worry about. Oh, and there's you guys who kept throwing scorpions at me! That's right! Where are the rest of my Teutonic Knights? I thought I sent them all to the thing. Oh, they're just so fucking slow. They make monks look fast. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, no! No, don't kill him! <laughs> Idiot. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Double idiot. Run! Run, monk! Run! Kill the tower. <laughs> you 
Yes, yes, go. Alright, can we get some battering rams going? You know, buddy, it might help a little bit if you... Oh, just kill it. Where am I... St oh, we found a treasure trove. Yeah, these guys have to go next. Hey, sir. You're morons, you know that, right? I do wish you could micromanage your units and their stances a little bit more. Like, have them target specific units or things like that. Or target units over buildings, for instance. Considering it seems like the AI can do something similar to that. Yeah, they're still using that archery range, so it has to go. Right, after this, I say we take on... Yeah, it'd probably be wisest to... Uh... Actually, I was planning on going after these guys. They're still strong, and they're giving me a pain in the ass, so... Yeah, you guys have to... We have to regroup. Or you're just luring me away from my target. <laughs> oh, they... They have elites. Are, are they in the Imperial Age? They must be. That is very much a not good. Oh, they must have monked me. I wonder. Oh yeah, it still works. What age are you in? Seven. Okay, it's too high. I forget which norm numbers uh, refer to which uh, thing specifically, but uh, yeah, you could do. Oh yeah, that one was fun. You, you type it to your allies and then they do the thing. Oh, hello. This looks like fun. Like, their AI is freaking out because there's nowhere to deliver the food. Saxony is defeated. They were the... No, that's Burgundy. Okay, that's... Oh, it's the yellow. Uh, there we go. Also, it should be mentioned that there are some glitches in the HD edition. I don't know if they've been patched. Uh, but randomly, like, like, absolutely randomly sometimes, the enemy would just resign. Even if they were doing very well, that... that they would just resign, and then a bunch of other allies would- or a bunch of other enemies would just follow right in their footsteps. Yeah. 
We'll go for the castle. That's more important right now. Uh, so, monk. You know, like, it would be nice if there was a command where if you were attacked, you could start attacking them. Quit touching me! <laughs> Night down. I'll take it. Uh, this was always fun. Granny could scrap better than that. Long time, no siege. <laughs> monk! I need a monk! These were always just <laughs> so fun. It is good to be the king. Enemy sighted! Don't point that thing at me! Start the game already! Sure, blame it on your ISP. Uh, it, it, it's funny because, like, when I originally played this game as a kid, I had no idea what an ISP is, but now that I'm an adult, I actually understand it. And yes, you should blame everything on your ISP. ISPs are fucking awful. Oh yeah, I, I better make sure I've actually won the game. Uh, actually, we can uh, save the game. If it'll ever fucking load. Barbarossa. I think I spelled that wrong. But yeah, in, in case of a crash or in case of what happened during the uh, uh, William Wallace campaign. Yeah, you guys don't need knights anymore. I'm confiscating them. You. Relic. Alright, can I get a trebuchet? Because we got to take care of another castle. Capture four of the six relics. You guys are done fucking about with houses and shit. We've got a... we got a game to win. We only need one more. And I would really like to finish this campaign before the two hour mark. Maybe even the hour and a half mark. That would be good. The Barbarossa campaign, this at least this first level, it can be quite difficult. Uh... Like, if I didn't build these walls here, I probably would be dead. You're in a very central location, surrounded by six different enemies, and they will get increasingly aggressive if you don't, you know, uh, show your hand, as it were. The purple, the red, and the cyan do not have walls. They are the ones you should go after, and then once you've conquered them, you are easily able to build up your forces to go after one of the walls. I did things a little bit weirdly this time around, but uh, I guess I did. Also, if you can get over here, you can convince some Mongols to join you. Stated. Hey, sir. I'm gonna actually try that. Maybe it'll help turn the tide of battle here. You know, if he ever gets there. If you're playing the Tuitans, you have to research the uh, technology that l makes infantry move faster, or you are fucked. Sestoma, Sasa. 
To the castle. I want to protect. To do, to do. Uh, can I make some more? Yes. Petards can be fun, but they're very hard to use. Uh, they're basically kamikaze soldiers. Uh, they walk into something and explode, and that's it. Uh, but if they're killed before they reach their destination, which usually happens, uh, then, uh, oh, it, it uh, doesn't work. If you're wondering, in this campaign, I usually always do go in this direction first. Uh, because the Swabians do not have a castle at the start. So they're the easiest to take out. Don't even need any, like, siege weapons or anything, just a few Tuatonic Knights. Go ahead, destroy the, the trebuchets. I don't need them anymore. I am glad this is almost over because my throat is killing me. <laughs> uh, two hours, two days in a row. I don't know how like daily vloggers, live streamers, whatever can do this shit. Just keep talking. Like, I'm gonna have to take a break for uh, tomorrow, uh, which is... Going to be annoying, considering this video is already going to be hard enough to get out. Oh, that explains it. These guys, for some fucking reason, have two of the relics. Did they take it from... these guys? I, I suppose that's possible. I wasn't aware they were, like, enemies or some shit. And the AI, I don't think, is complex enough to do those kind of alliance deals. So, the knights and the archery shit needs to come to an end. Uh, get the rid of the villager. Hope the monk gets here soon. I just want this to be over. Uh, I think I actually did do this campaign once as a kid fairly. Just because I did the first level in all of the other campaigns. Uh, I would have had to, so... Um, but beyond level two, I, I'm actually I'm actually doing Barbarossa blind. Like I said, I've never beaten all the campaigns before. Just the first two. I'm gonna be quiet while we uh, deal with victory here. Cause my throat is just uh, begging me to stop. I don't know, is it possible to lose your voice permanently? Oh no, Bohemia resigned. Let's see here. I don't remember there being something here. Your Majesty, this way leads east to Hungary. We must be careful. 
There are Mongols in that direction. This war. Yeah. Yeah. Your Majesty, these Mongolian warriors say they will join our army for 200 gold. Okay, uh, diplomacy. Mongols. A wise choice. Told you. If you're having trouble, just get somebody over here. And it can really turn the tide of the game. <sighs> Good god, this isn't even the longest strategy game. Longest level in this game. And this isn't the longest pl longest game in the book. Uh, but uh, I'm going to need to do these games sooner or later. Come on, just make it. By capturing all of the holy relics. You have re-established your claim as Holy Roman Emperor. Yay. I feel one of these days I'm going to permanently lose my voice forever because I'm talking so fucking much. Uh. Okay, so it's the greens and the yellows that have the walls. Called Barbarossa the scourge of Europe, but he was as skilled a diplomat as he was a warrior. He united Germany with more than just a sword. He established a set of legal codes known as the land pieces. He helped the hungry by fixing an official price for grain after every harvest. The provinces of Germany quickly became the wealthiest and most powerful in Europe. The Holy Roman Empire was so successful, in fact, that it quickly overgrew its boundaries. Yay. Uh, timeline. Uh, one thing they should have fixed in the HD edition was this. This is, this graph here, it makes no sense to anybody. It just looks awful. It's ugly and cluttered and doesn't convey the information it, it tries to show. I don't even know what they consider a battle event considering we, things were constantly being attacked. But the other graphs and stuff... Uh, they... they work. Jesus Christ, Bohemia, you got enough? That's... yeah, I am playing on standard. Alright, it's been a day of rest. We can, uh, go back to the campaign. Continue, uh, Barbarossa. Hopefully I can do this one quicker. The Empire was in full bloom, and her population... Ah, sorry. I will... I will fix Your that. Majesty, the counties of Bavaria and... It's... Let's, let's try that again. The empire was in full bloom, and her population was rapidly expanding. The Germans felled forests, drained marshlands, and reclaimed land from the sea itself. But there was still not enough space. <laughs> Bringing the vastness of Poland into the empire would ease the pressure on the empire's borders. To deal with Poland, Barbarossa called up one of his mightiest vassals, Henry the Lion. Henry was a powerful prince of Saxony, and his decadent palaces outshone the emperor's own. While he swore fealty to Barbarossa, some questioned whether Henry the Lion did not want the empire for his own. By ordering Henry the Lion to aid in the subjugation of Poland, Barbarossa meant to test his oath of allegiance once and for all. Uh, okay. Gotta, gotta invade Poland like everyone else in history. Your Majesty, 
The counties of Bavaria and Saxony will provide us with the resources needed to outfit the Imperial Army, but we must defend them from the Polish. Alright, so we got plenty of resources this time around, that's good. The German states of Bavaria and Saxony are feeding the army to defend the helpless feeders at all cost. Okay, so it's me. The oh, yay. They're portrayed by the okay. Uh, do I have any... I've... Uh, I have no villagers at all, it seems. Uh, I can make... Alright. Uh... <coughs> so, defeat Poland, we must find Poland. And make some uh, friends along the way. Eh, we'll do some fishing too. Okay, so once again, the hints. The German states of Bavaria and Saxony are feeding the armies of Barossa at. Okay. So, at Saxony, as Bavaria, okay. And we need to go after the blue, okay. So I'm assuming that they're, yeah, it's somewhere around this way. resources always worth trying it and a, and a random map game that tends to actually work yeah hmm. well, let's go after that Power straight away. Castle. Yeah. Oh, I can't build trebuchets. It's it's the. Do I have a siege workshop at least? Definitely want to leave some guys here just in case I need them. Yeah. Yeah. There's a castle there that's concerned. Oh yeah, now I can see which age they're in. I don't know why that wasn't even up. There's like no reason not to have that there. Yeah. And of course they're slow as dog shit. There's my barracks. Come on. Uh, so they're supposed to help me or something or... Something. Yeah. Towers on top of hills have extra advantages. The Goths have the ability to make their unique units through barrackses. Don't think they could do that in the Castle Age. Uh, but when they are able to do it, uh, you're you're screwed, basically. Can I make something to piss them off? Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot! That, that's perfect. That's exactly the amount I need to do anything.
what the goths do, and they do it fast, is they just make a shit ton of soldiers. Huskarls? One Huskarl isn't much of a, a big problem. Uh, they're quick and they're good at scouting. Uh, but any individual Huskarl? I have some unfortunate news for you. You see, it is I who should be Holy Roman Emperor. Kneel before the lion. Oh, that is not good. Uh, defeat. Oh, no. We should capture them so that we will not be dependent upon our allies for supplies. Okay. Going the other way. Oh, stupid bulls. The outposts I'm not too concerned with. They're, I guess they're just there to uh, uh, build up tension of some kind. So, we need to go and take out the Henry the Lion. Everybody wants to talk to me right now. Oh, jeez. What? How many battering rams do I have? Ah, no. Get, get away. Jeez. Uh, da -da -da. There we go. I have alerted them to the fact that I am indeed recording. All right. Good, the wolf is fucking dead. They're giving me a lot of gold and a lot of paid what, zero. How do you okay? They're paying me a lot of gold and a lot of wood, which uh, is good for archery. Which I can't upgrade, god damn it. Where's my uh Yeah, we're gonna Street it. What the? Oh, that's just the outpost. Okay. Stated. That's a soul. Wait, not my pike, man. And you guys get to. This var. Yeah. 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 This var. I love hit and run. The tower is gone? What? Did I? Oh! Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> the enemy of my enemy, I guess. Ah! No! The enemy of my enemy is a false... I... Oh, my God. 
I probably should not be attacking the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, these guys first. Because the biggest issue with the Goths is that they can create things quickly. And we need a battering ram to take that out. Or, yeah, because my soldiers are going to die. Oh, thank you! You're actually giving me some fucking f uh, food. We need to get rid of that castle, basically. We need you guys to be defensive. Pikemen, I'm not too concerned about. Yeah, but we don't want our buildings to fall. That's... that is for certain. Yep, just... just... do it in. The reason why I'm going after Henry first is because he is too close to me. Although, as civilizations go, I'm I'm far more afraid of the uh, the Goths. Jesus, what is with all the wolves? Ah, fuck you. What can I create without too much worry? Okay, these guys cost a lot of food. Knights cost food. The only thing I can really use is archers. What about you guys? Cavalry archers. Not the direction I usually go, but not a bad one. Oh, jeez. They are too strong to, for one-on-one -on -one combat here. Where'd my fishing ship go? I might not be able to... I have no wood. I have a market, though. I can sell the stone that I'm never going to be able to use, buy up some wood... And you go with fishing ships. As long as I'm getting in one resource, as long as I have one resource, I can uh, trade to get the rest of them. <sighs> I don't know how much I have to worry because. The Goths are going after Henry here. <sighs> Seriously though, Poland has gotten invaded like 50 fucking times. This is how you take care of uh, Sonic Knights. <laughs> uh, cavalry archers can be really fun. 
if you know what you're doing. Excellent. Yeah, the, the one soldier they keep sending at me is not going to uh, do much. Got a castle. Oh, thank you. We're getting something good now. What? Go, kill it. Uh, but yeah, the whole the enemy of my enemy thing it usually isn't a good. Uh, it usually isn't a good strategy. Yay! Was I supposed to get something when I killed Henry? Let's march on then. Oh. So, yay, <laughs> villagers! I can, I can build something. Probably not the best place at all for a down. Actually, no, it's in the protection of the castle. No, I'm not too worried about a, a, an onslaught like this. Let's bring the battering rams home. So, the best way to, uh, uh, the best comparison when it comes to the Goths is that they're kind of like army ants. Any individual one, not a problem. At all. Oh. Fuck you, get Yeah, yeah, double fuck you. <laughs> really? That's, uh... Did they kill off my fire ships? I think they did. Let's open the fucking door. No, destroy the fucking outpost. Nobody cares. Outposts are generally a building that nobody ever builds in the actual game. Why build that when you could go with, uh, I don't know, a tower? Come on, let him out. Thank you. 
And considering there's a relic here, we should probably also take care of that before too long. So I believe that this uh, this became a little bit easier. That's of course a belief. It's probably completely wrong, but still. Also, I don't like that the campaigns make you different colors other than blue. Like if you don't change the colors at all when you're playing a normal a normal random map game. Uh, you're always blue as player one. Uh, and red is usually the enemy, so it can kind of, uh, screw you up a little bit. Seriously, what the fuck is with all the wolves? Granted, they're in my favor this time, but still. It's a monk. No, no wood cutting. We need uh, mill. My so called allies are taking all my food. Speaking of them, I, I may as well as protect them. I, I do think they kind of need it. Oh yes, by the way, I turned off the Discord overlay. And luckily, since we're playing a strategy game, I can kind of multitask. Oh, that's a castle. That is a castle. We need to get rid of it now. Where where are my things? My battering rams. Where did they go? Sestoma. Seeing a castle so close when you're facing with the goths, that's a no-go. That is a... That is a you stop that now. It's a forward castle. Oh, can we? Yes, we can. Just not now. So far, it seems like this one is easier than the uh, last level, so that's a good sign. Still, we need to follow the... Let's give them something to worry about. Everybody destroy the fucking castle. Oh, that is, that is, that is bad. That is bad. Do I have anything else? No. Oh, yes I do. They're too slow to do anything, but they'll... Yeah. 
Where's the... I think... I don't think they have murder holes, I just think it's because it's on a hill. Oh, we're out of... Okay. Yeah, this is the worst time to be building farms. I completely know that. But it must be done. Since... Oh, these guys are actually really fast. Got a good line of sight, too. Just keep moving on to the next one, I guess. The dock is still there. Well, you guys follow along. Uh, you guys, too. We just need to keep pushing this offensive. Thousand wood. Uh, why am I selling stone? Stone is important. Eh, that's that's what I wanted anyway. Stated. So one step at a time, I guess. Hey, sir? Actually, uh, their towers dying is going to be a lot more painful to them than a dock dying. Oh yeah, you can play on fast speed, which is, uh, a good way to die. Doc, just to piss him off. Oh, hello. You leave my rams alone. My ram. Uh. Good! Keep making them! Keep making things that can't do shit! Oh, thank you. That was me. some more wood that I don't need. Oh, it's a house. Oh, tower. Tower goes bye-bye. Yeah. 
yeah, I think we're going to need a town center somewhere around here. Doesn't fit anywhere in there. Okay. Ouvert. The sound of a ram going down is just so satisfying, you know, unless it's your own. <sighs> oh, just everybody kill it. like nothing over here. Yeah. Even on the lower difficulties, the gods just yeah. go all out. I, I don't know why. Uh, it's definitely not something that's uh, exclusive to the remake, that's for sure. Stated. Oh, not this shit. Uber. Thanks for all the wood! Is dead. And I, I keep saying, I am playing on, you know, standard difficulty. Yeah. So, we need to build, uh, siege workshop. I build a siege workshop here that will annoy my allies greatly. Oh, no. They, they're not going to destroy this. Stable. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I am getting my, uh, certain buildings destroyed and shit, and I'm not reacting as fast as I probably should, and yeah, that is because I am kind of, uh, multitasking. Yeah. 
Look, the more of their siege weapons I destroy, the better. That's that's really all I can say. Actually, no, I that's, think that's kind of unnecessary. Uh, I'll just buy back some stone. A little bit much, but... Uh, yeah. Can we build... Yes, we can build a forward castle. Excellent. Eh, it's not quite forward enough. Be considered forward. Uh, so, I don't know exactly what constitutes as defeating them. I guess destroying them entirely. Just decimating their entire forces. Hopefully this doesn't block the way too much. It is time. Oh, hey. I, I have more things. Okay. Good. Yeah, whenever you're facing the Goths, every castle, every... Especially the castles, but every barracks. Like, yeah. the biggest strategy with the Goths is to ba basically build a castle right next to your enemy's territory. Because they have a research called, uh, let's see, what, uh, technology tree. Here you can look at everyone's. Uh, so, Goths, infantry, unique tech, anarchy. Doop, 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 doop. Anarchy. Allows Huskarls to be created at the barracks, and they also have access to conscription. Units at the barracks, archery range, stable, and castle are produced 33% faster. Barracks units are created 100% faster. Uh, and I believe these all stack, so, uh... The Goths. They're only good at really one thing. I mean, the Goths literally cannot build walls. So, uh... But they're deadly at that one thing that they can do. Yay. Okay. Why am I hearing a kind of, um, East Asian music when I'm playing as the Tuatans? I mean, Civilization 5, at least, uh, the music depend- the music changes depending on which Civilization you're playing as. Then again, that game came out, like, over a decade later, but still. I mean, this is a Germanic campaign. I should not be hearing that particular song. And wait a minute, this, this this remake was made after that, so... It is kind of a minimal uh, HD edition. At least it, it was back when it first came out. Why the hell does Poland have st yeah. still have such a high score? That worries me.
Despite how annoyingly deadly they can be, uh, towers do not constitute uh, uh, still being alive. In a conquest game, you have to destroy basically all buildings and all people, quote unquote. You definitely have to kill all the units, even siege units and boats and shit. Uh, but. Uh, there are some buildings you can leave around, like walls, for instance. Walls do not count. Oh, wait, I can make trebuchets. What the fuck am I doing? Okay, we need to just get rid of this wood. Come on, you... You did it! The pikemen destroyed a tower. That is never going to happen again. Oh, uh, hello. Actually, no, we want, uh, cavalry archers. You might want to go over there. What are you doing? Kill something. Oh, I have knights. Go! Go! Defend my expensive ass shit! Thank you. Yeah. Where else could they be? They've probably got a castle somewhere. Good thing is there doesn't seem to be any fucking stone on the map, so there... I have... okay. Yeah. This bar. Why? Why do they have such a high score? I don't get it. Yeah. Onward. We just need to explore the entire map in its entirety. Hello. Every single Huskarl has to die. Oh yeah, population. God damn it. Well, transport ships are not very useful. Okay, I don't think they're hiding in the f in the trees.
There be a castle. I don't think I've seen any uh, villagers of theirs, so uh, I can only assume that they don't have any. Especially because their score is static. You see how mine and my ally set score is going up? That's because there's villagers constantly gathering things, and that contributes to a score. So I don't think it's possible for them to be able to rebuild anything. Which is good news as far as I can see. Oh, what the fuck? Where are you going? They must have, like, just a shit ton of uh, resources in reserve. So you can't do something like outlasting them. Uh, I don't know, I'll go here. to see where else they put a castle. Oh! Another one. Seriously, they're they're like ants. They're like bugs. One of them isn't going to do mu too much issue, but they're, they swarm. Sure, they'll find a way around. Yeah. There, I suppose there could be a still a hidden castle somewhere, but I doubt it. Twice as fast as the last one. Awesome. Uh, but I can only do like one of these per session, so... <laughs> uh. Henry expected to be drawn and quartered, the usual fate of traitors in those times. But Barbarossa recognized the potential for a strong ally and officially forgave him, provided that Henry the Lion would swear to support Barbarossa from now on. That sounds Amazing. like a mistake. Henry agreed. Germany was unified, and Henry the Lion was pacified. But the Holy Roman Empire was not complete. Harkening back to Charlemagne, the Empire claimed ownership of Italy, and especially Rome. Uh, that sounds like a mistake. I'm not the biggest history buff, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Total score. Okay. Military stats, economy stats. Yeah, see, they they didn't collect anything. Technology stats, society stats, timeline. Yeah. Yeah, this means nothing. Yeah, still standard level. Okay, that's. That's enough for this 